point. What is it you're doing? Th these are, uh, we'll call them negative shapes within the actual tree, the, the main player, the subject matter. Remember, this is the fella, he's on stage now. And so we want to create some negative shapes in behind him. We uh, did a bit of a cheat and um, masked in the trunk. But these are all little shapes now coming off that tree that I'm creating just with the brush. I'm scumbling with the side of the brush, creating some nice rough edges. And that world there sort of fuses with this here, almost like another bonsai tree there. So now, again, these are like negatives. And yeah, I am I'm keeping the value quite light. The reason being that if you glaze, it is glazing by the way too, right? It's wet paint on top of dry. Um, if we go too heavy-handed with that, it can look like an afterthought, and it, and, it, and it can look a little bit too much like it's been thought of after the fact. So you don't want to lay this in too heavy. So I'm hinting at shapes there. Really, it's just texture. Not too busy. Let's say I want to, this value of this bush here is so much lighter than this uh, thing that's influencing us, this uh, inspiration, if you will. I don't have to be locked into that inspiration, but I do find this value to be too light, so I can glaze it. Um, I'm middle ground. That means uh, my first thought is, okay, if I'm middle ground, I'm coming warmer, so I'm going to create a warmer green. Quite a light, pardon me, um, quite a, uh, about a four or five in scale of value. And it's all evenly prepared, slightly warm. Got a nice flat brush. And now I'm going to glaze over top of it. And, you know, even the tip of the brush, as it, see, it's uh, not too critical, that top edge. And it's a flat brush, so it, covers a lot of ground in a short period of time. Not too dilly dally. Now see, um, I just created a new value on that bush. And maybe the, th the thing to note is that you don't want this to dry too quickly. That's the reason why you'd use a flat brush. I, I was able to cover a lot of ground and move that paint all the way across quickly. Now I'm happy with that temperature. Problem solved. This um, distant tree, um, it, I'm gonna. I like that shape. I could have abandoned that shape, but I decided to keep it in there. Um, so, but I, I, I want the, it to report as brown, but not too vivid a brown, because I don't want it to compete with my focal point. So I'm just going to really quickly fill, again, this is glazing. Oops, a bit too warm. So a bit of a statement of a, a tree in the background there. Oh, I have to let that dry so we can just take a break. So see how that was a um, slightly cooler redwood, if you will, redwood trunk.
Okay. <clears throat> I'm really quite happy with this bush now. Do you see how it, before it was so high key, now I've made it go back. Now it's time to remove that masking fluid so I can make some decisions now with this branches. So here's our main player here. Now, in order to uh, describe it um, and make it the focal point, it is by default, just because it's in the center of the page, and because of all these paths of direction, it takes us right to there. So it's, I you know, inarguably the focal point. But it's also, because it's the main player on the stage, it's also my place where I can make them really spotlighted, shine. So I'm going to do that by way of brilliant color, complements, complementary colors beside each other, um, and also keeping um, the source of light in mind, that is so critical. So where's my path, my source of light? Um, when I look at your photograph, um, it almost feels top lit to me. It feels like a, you know, the spotlight's right over top of it. So there's highlights on the rocks and whatnot. Um, it's it, really at this point mostly top lit. My judgment call as an artist is to say, do I want to keep that top lighting or my freedom, can I go to the left or right of that? I, I remember now I put a little sunshine there and that reminds me, okay, that's going to be where my spotlight's coming from. So if that's the case, um, you, you could um, re-mask a, a highlight, but you know, just as you're still building confidence. But by now I know that if I just you know, throw it on some paint and, and leave a little white edge, that's going to be my highlight. So I'd like to uh, get the color of the trunk in there first. And I'm going to exaggerate things quite a bit here. So here's my first glaze, or, or pardon me, wash in the tree. And I'm going to kind of go nuts with the color. And that might seem crazy hot, but that's okay. So see how I'm keeping the highlight. So at this point it's exaggerated. So little things like that branch has a top lid highlight and color underneath. Highlight, color. Highlight, color. Highlight side. Color side. This is so important. Alright, so the paint is still wet, and every now and then, because it's wet, I can throw in a few wet and wet. Now, so you can see that that really hot, brilliant color got, it's still there, but it's not, it's sneaking through in a nice way. And by the way, it helps to create some marks that define the shape. So that's a column, think of it like a, a trunk of a tree, <laughs> this columnar. So every now and then a shape, a rather a line or something that describes that column, that's helpful. Even though it's not maybe there, there's your way of describing that shape. And that, it creates form.
All right, that was subtle and now I'm going to step back as a whole and go, all right, that was good. Uh, Uh, go back to some negatives. Negative shapes in the tree. Alright, so those look like shapes in behind and with this negative painting you can go deeper and deeper and deeper. So I describe those general shapes, you know, negative shapes to report a tree, but within those negative shapes you can even go deeper. So let's say, you know, I have a, a shape and a shape and a line. So within that I could go deeper and put a new little glaze on top and create a new shape. So that's just been pushed back further. Maybe I'll, I'll do another one in here. So point being that you can, you know, push back these negative shapes because they have a bit of a value in them. They look like they're in behind. And I mean, you could really just carry on doing that for a long, long time. And this is so relaxing. It's just a really pleasurable, it's like knitting, I suppose, or something. You, know, you can just keep pushing and it's so effective to go deeper within it, finding those shapes. Now, having said that, you don't want to overdo it, <laughs> but 